<gasps> oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh my god, oh my god, I love their meaning. The fact that I'm making this video is truly a dream come true. My name is Shine and I will be discussing the process of breeding autosynclus in hopes of getting other people to breed them as well and so we have more experiences in general. If you didn't know already, autosynclus are stunned in the wild with cyanide to be caught and sold. There are few success stories and no captive breeders so doing this is very important to me so i thought i'd share my experience and hope we can go on from there so as you can see here the autosynclus are actually doing what is called a mating call and the female just goes up and down the glass and the male chases her around until they eventually find a leaf and start mating and they will go on the leaf and the male will fertilize the eggs that she's carrying. And this pose will look like a T pose as you can see here. They're kind of, the male is wrapped around the female and he is fertilizing the eggs at this point. Um, I tried to get the best shot that I could. It really did catch me by surprise. But as soon as I saw them dancing around the tank, I knew something was happening. And I didn't expect this to happen so early. This tank has been set up for now two months, or no, three months, and they are already breeding. I did have these autosynclus in a 10 gallon before, and now they are in a 25 gallon tank. But as you can see here, they are just doing these mating process. They really dance around a leaf before they find the correct position, and then they do their thing, and there they are. And I just showing this shot because it's much closer so you can see a bit more clear how that pose looks. So if you see your autos doing this, they are definitely mating. And they will continue to dance around the plants and other items in your aquarium for hours on end. And they will do this so that they are fertilizing the eggs at the same time and placing them wherever they want to. So as you can see here, they are doing that dance around the leaf. So what is the trigger to get them to spawn? I really highly believe after a second planned attempt that the answer is to do a bit of a large end water change, maybe 40% of the tank. And I honestly believe that this is a big trigger because I'm not the only one who has just accidentally have a spawning after doing this kind of water change. So that's something to keep in mind. I keep the temperature at 71 to 75 Fahrenheit and with that I don't have a heater. Proteins such as live or frozen foods will definitely help and I recommend having some kind of current in the tank. I use a wave maker. And just to specify where the auto seemed to like placing the eggs, they were on Amazon swords and the cryptochorines. So here you can see the female that's carrying eggs and her belly does look big, although it was much bigger the second time around. And on the right side you can see another female who is not carrying eggs so that you can kind of see the difference here. The one on the left that is carrying the eggs has a bit more of a dominant or prominent belly. <laughs> now the only other tank mates in this 25 gallon are snails. There are ramshorn snails, Malaysian trumpet snails, and bladder snails. And then there are a few bits of infusorias and copods and detritus worms. So nothing to harm the eggs or at least the viable eggs and the autosynclus fry. So now I'm going to show you a photo of the autosynclus eggs the second time around because the first batch I did not actually find the eggs. I was not able to find them even though I looked forever and hours. I just couldn't find them. They were really good with hiding them. But on day 1, April 5th, 2020, we finally saw the auto sinkless fry for the very first time. And the auto fries will have yolk sacs attached to them. They will eat this before they can eat anything else as this will give them the nutrients they need for the first bit of their life or like the first two days of their life. 
and then they will start to grow. Here you can still see that it has the yolk sac attached. And these babies are tiny. Here I am showing you from afar what they look like. They look like a little speck on the glass and they are so easy to miss. In fact, I spent hours every day searching for every one that I knew existed, but it was honestly rewarding to see them. At this point, we can say we successfully bred Auto Sinkless. So here are the specifications of the tank. It's a 25 gallon tank again, and the pH is about 7.5 to 7.8. The stock only has a total of six Auto Sinkless and the snails, three females and three males. And I did do a 40% water change right before the day they bred. Again, at this point, the tank is still only one month old, so the new wood I had put in had been growing an abundance of biofilm, which worked out in my favor. I thought the babies might be able to eat them, but in the end, all the adult autos and snails got to them before, so that didn't work out. But on day two, you can see the yolk sac is much smaller, and at this point, I saw eight in total of the auto sinkless fry. At this point, I was getting kind of scared on what to feed them because we still don't have a proper answer on what they will eat at the time they lose their yolk sacs. Now, I focused very much in this first attempt on culturing infusoria or microfauna, and I think I focused a bit too much on this. I think that they needed more solid foods that I didn't give them. So, and I'm saying this because the 8 auto fry actually did not make it in the end. I know, spoiler alert, very sad. But that's the whole reason I want to post this video and share it to the world is so that we can get more experience and so we can know an exact answer of what to feed these guys. Because they really didn't get biofilm. There was still biofilm for them to search, but they never looked for it. They mostly stayed on the glass. I didn't see algae as a good contestant at this point because I thought they would prefer a darker environment for being so little and so I didn't really feed algae but I did feed chlorella flakes and baby brine shrimp, powdered brine shrimp so that they could still have other options of protein. But I honestly feel like I needed more solid veggies in their diet and hopefully it will work out. I know some people had success with feeding just zucchini and them figuring out that they can eat the zucchini. So I am going to try to put zucchini more often. But they really started to look like auto sinkless here, as you can see. And I was so happy and so proud. And so losing them was the hardest thing. They did survive for a week. And then after two days later, they just disappeared. And... I did actually put a veggie a piece of lettuce on day seven and they did go on the lettuce as you will see in a little bit here. The auto fry was on the leaf of the lettuce and that was cool. I thought maybe okay he's eating it. That's good at this point but maybe I should have fed solid veggies even sooner than I did and that was only one veggie in the whole period of time that I had put in the tank and they definitely did show signs of falling here. This activity was really weird to me. I was not prepared to see this and I was very worried out of my mind and I think with reason because they did disappear soon after and I just didn't know what to do, but I couldn't give up because I need to make this work. So now, May 7th, yesterday of 2020, one month later, they did it again. And I did predict this would happen because of the formula. So I will be making a part two. But in the meantime, I hope any of you can try this as well. I do believe our biggest answer that we are looking for is how to keep them alive, how to keep these autos surviving, what to feed them. And so I'm really hoping that this video encourages anyone with auto sinkless to maybe try to breed them if you have the opportunity because it would be really nice if we could get some captive sellers 
to breed and sell them instead of stunning them in the wild with cyanide and ruining their natural habitat. Again, I will be making another video on this since it's happening again as I planned. And I think with that, I b strongly believe that the formula works, that the water change, the water current, the protein will help in the process of getting them to breed. This accidental spawning will provide us the answer eventually because I am determined. For now, this is how to breed Autosynclus and stay tuned to where we find out how to get them to survive.